Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day. Hey, so we're making lunch. I thought I would invite you into our lunch. And uh, we're still doing the reboot. So for those of you who are rebooting, I'm gonna make some of this. If you hear my air fryer, which is right over here to the side of you, I'm making the girls some steak. And then one of our air fryers died, so we have two. And I haven't taken it back to Costco because I kind of feel bad because we used it so much. I know there's a guarantee or a warranty, but I'm like, we use it every single day, multiple times a day. So on my Christmas list from my husband, hint, hint, baby, if you're watching, can you grab the dogs, please, babe? I um, need another air fryer. I want the really big one, like the really big one because we use it so much. There, I think there's something at our door. Hey, so as you're tuning in, where are you tuning in from? How is your day? We're making lunch. Raise your hand if you're rebooting. Today is, it's called ketogenesis day. Meaning yesterday, for those of you who are rebooting, you were getting out all the glycogen storage. I'm not an expert or a doctor. All that means is you're getting the carbs and the sugar and the junk out. Today is like serious fat burning mode. And so for those of you who are rebooting, today's your last day. Tomorrow you get to wake up and have your protones and eat low carb meals and feel amazing. For those of you who are not rebooting, what are you having for lunch? So. I'm making my favorite bone broth, the French onion, right now. Uh, where are you tuning in from? Oh, Kentucky! I'm in Kentucky too right now. So we're in Kentucky at the moment. We're right outside Louisville. Louisville and you say it, Louisville. Um, and so I was going to show you the steak that I'm making the girls. They're having a steak and salmon in the air fryer, but I have to take take turns because they can only make one at a time. <gasps> my spinny cup isn't working. Hold on. Does anybody have a spinny cup like where you put powder in? You could put like something for your coffee in it. Oh, their steak is done, I think. Hold on. I gotta get this spinny cup to spin. Oh, there we go. I should show you. It's really cool. For those of you who are like, where do you get the spinny cups? Amazon. Just go to Amazon and type in spinny mug. Look it. So that's what I'm having, bone broth. <laughs> Intermittent fasting, that's great. So here's one thing I want to talk to you about because this is a question I feel like I got the most yesterday and it was all around tracking your food. So as I'm waiting for my kids' food to finish, which I need to check the steak, I am making them a steak in the air fryer and some salmon and they're just having some salad because that's what's in the refrigerator, so that's what they're going to eat. I, and you guys want to know my most, okay, I always joke, like I say, hey, my favorite kitchen appliance or favorite kitchen gadget is the air fryer, or I love our food processor, I love our ninja, but you always want to know the ultimate, the best kitchen, kitchen, the thing you can have in your kitchen that most people probably don't have in their kitchen, that I swear is the best thing in the whole world. I know it's going to be so silly. You want me to tell you? I'm checking their steak. It's a pair of scissors. I have like five pairs of kitchen scissors. I cut up all of their food with it. I cut up my steak with it. It's way easier than using a steak knife. And you wanna know where I got the idea from? I used to work at a school. So I used to work in um, with the kids at special needs kids at a high school. So I did that years and years and years ago. And they cut up all of their food with the scissors. And I remember going, oh, that's brilliant. And so I got like five pairs of scissors and I always use them all the time. So I'm making the girls a steak. For those of you who are like, how do you make a steak in the air fryer? I'm gonna talk about tracking your food in a second. All I do is stick the steak in the air fryer, season it with some salt or garlic. You can't, you, like I can't tell you how to cook your steak because you like your steak different than I do. So my girls like our steak light pink. So I usually make it medium well and it's almost done. I'm gonna make it a little bit more, but it actually keeps the flavor. It's delicious, super easy to use. I cook it at 370 because when I, Opened up our air fryer. That's what it was naturally set on. So I rarely change the temperature. I know. And I cook it for like 10 minutes at a time, cut into it and see how it is. So that's what the girls are having. Where are you tuning to Anchorage? You're from Alaska. That's amazing. I've been to Anchorage, Alaska before. I went there in 95. I was young when the sun barely went down. So anyways, here's what I want you to understand about tracking your food. So for those of you who are brand new to keto or you're like, I've got to track all of my macros. Uh, how do you track your food? Do you track your food? What should my macros look like? Here's a couple tips on tracking. So in the very beginning, my husband tracked every single thing that he ate, everything. 
he had a, he had a little scale. He tracked the, um, the ounces of meat. He tracked everything he put in his mouth. He used my fitness pal because it's really widely used, really easy to use. It doesn't necessarily have a, an exact way for a keto tracker, but what I want to tell you is this. If you're like, I just need to get back on track, I don't track my food anymore just because I know I shouldn't eat that, I can eat this, I shouldn't, and I just, I'm not a huge overeater, so when you learn what your body, when you learn and actually listen to your body and you can go, I'm full or I don't need that. Oh my goodness, excuse me, I had a keto up. I just burped online. <laughs> That's so embarrassing. <laughs> I was telling my six-year-old daughter, she was burping during school, and I kept being like, stop burping. And the girls were like, you burp all the time. I'm like, I don't burp. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. I forgot what I was saying. But anyways, going back to tracking <laughs> your food. My husband used my fitness pal. So what I want to encourage you is this download my fitness pal or there's a carb tracker right this is not about perfection all you're gonna do is track your food for one week okay not trying to be exact if you're doing a keto diet and you're not drinking ketones at the end of the day there's like a there's like a pie chart that has carbs fats and proteins so those are called macros right so when you're eating your foods your food is all gonna fall into carbs proteins or fats at the end of the day, even on my fitness pal, <laughs> I know that they're already holding it against me. Somebody's still going to hold it against me. Hey, um, my burping. I know. You guys, I can actually burp the alphabet. You want to know a secret talent that I used to do when I was young? I can burp the entire alphabet. I can actually burp sentences. I know it's weird. I can make myself burp. I'm sure you wanted to know that. It's like a secret talent. Someday I'll be on America's Got Talent. I'm sure of it. Um, but when you're tracking your food, side note, or squirrel, right? When you're tracking your food, do it for a week. Do the best that you can, right? Like, when you're hungry, you eat. Here's the kicker. Don't eat if you're not hungry. If you get to the end of the day and you go, oh my goodness, my pie chart, my pie chart says I, I ate, you know, the amount of carbs. I had, you know, pretty good protein, but I haven't eaten all of my fat. And if you're not hungry, do not go eat to fill your pie chart. Does that make sense? Um, I was going to look for a... Don't eat to make sure you get enough fat in. So the reason I tell people, if you wanna eat, like if you wanna track things, track it for a week, because at the end of the day, it'll show you how much you ate, and then you can go, oh, I overate on this, or wow, I didn't realize how many carbs I was eating, or oh, I actually am doing a pretty good job. And so what I tell people is just get a good visual, and then you can tweak it from there. So do it for a week. You don't have to track for your whole life. It just helps you kinda of get on track to go, I'm eating too much, I'm not eating enough, or I could eat a little bit more of this. So don't feel like you've got to try to fill in the pie chart. Does that make sense? It's helpful for a little while. My husband did it for like a year. I did it for like a couple weeks just to get a good visual. That's it. You can use my fitness pal, carb counter. The point is just to have a good understanding of how much you're eating. Oftentimes people don't realize they dive into eating high fat, low carb, and they're eating too much fat. Fat has more calories than carbs, than carbs do. Let me rephrase that. When you're eating a lot of fats, that's great. Fat keeps you fuller longer. Oftentimes people use the excuse, I think their steak is done. People use the excuse of, oh, it's keto, I can eat it. Oh, it's good fats, I can eat it. Oh, I can have more of that, it's keto. And they're not hungry. So when you're eating fat, like avocados and fat bombs and cheese and nuts, the excuse is, oh, I can eat that because it's keto, but one gram of fat has more calories than one gram of carb. So in a sense, you're overeating. If your goal is fat loss, the goal isn't to overeat. The goal is to eat what your body needs to, to sustain. And the point of eating fat is to keep you fuller longer so you don't overeat and you don't eat as much. Is this making sense? You guys want to see their steak? Oh, man. This is a problem when you have kids and you stay home and you're rebooting. You're not eating, but this is what the girls are going to eat. I'm going to make them a salmon, too. So they're just going to share that with some salad. Do you want to look at Oh, she smashed we've got a Lego problem here. Did she wreck your Lego? Oh, shoot. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, I'll come down. Okay, I'll come. She called me a poopy meanie, poopy meanie. She called you a poopy meanie? Yeah, she called me a poopy meanie. Come here. Do you want to know what I did online? 
I burped. I burped while I was on the screen. What was, who was I just telling not to burp? She has my talent, you guys. She can burp on demand. I can fake burp. Can you? Can you burp on demand? Don't do it. People are eating. So anyways, this is their food. The girl, what are you having for lunch? I hope that made sense about tracking your food. Does that make sense? Of like, don't overeat, don't eat when you're not hungry. The point of tracking is to give you a good visual for a good week or two so that you go, oh yeah, this is kind of what my meal should look like. This is how I feel. I eat when I'm hungry. So I just wanted to pop on here and share that. If your goal going into the new year is to be a healthier you, maybe track your food for a week or two. It's super helpful. Don't get overwhelmed. Don't get stressed. Don't eat when you're not hungry. Drink more water. Uh, we are doing a 10-day challenge starting on January 2nd or 3rd, depending on when everybody gets it. I have a whole bunch of you already plugged in to a secret group called Keto Mom Secrets to where you're going to be educated and we're all going to start the challenge together. Or for those customers who are already drinking ketones, if you are my personal customer, post customer below so that you and I can chat. I'm going to plug you into this group. We're going to do some cool things, prizes, water bottles, winning ketones all January. If you want to know more and start the 10 day challenge, January 2nd or 3rd with lots of us, uh, post challenge below. Share what you're having for lunch, sharing is caring, and people need to know what you're having because people just love to know about food and you should share the video because sharing is caring. And then you'll find yourself an accountability partner. Here's the last thing I will say. You wanna know why I love this group that we're doing in January because accountability is so important. And why is it important? whether it's online or maybe maybe you share this video and your coworker or your friend or your neighbor sees like you're on a keto journey and click they want to team below. up with you, click down below. No, but you guys, this is so important. I'm here to be your accountability partner. This group that we're, like, we're doing the challenge, if you want more info, post challenge, we're here to help you. All, you're do, all you do is check into the group or the page and you ask questions and you plug in win prizes, work on your health and fitness, and you know you've got people that are on the same journey as you are. But you guys, the accountability piece is so important because I'll give you an example. I am not motivated to get up and work out by myself unless I have one of two people helping me. When I'm in Minnesota, I need my sister to come and pick me up or I know she's gonna meet me there, right? Or number two, my husband kicks me out of bed every morning. Here's the problem. My husband's in Dallas. Do you wanna know something? I didn't work out today. I actually stayed up really, really late. So I'll, I stayed up really late talking to a lot of you. At like 11 o'clock at night, my husband's like, stop talking to people. You can finish talking to them tomorrow. I hate having a full inbox of messages. So I'll go until they're, they're gone. And he's like, they'll be fine. Well, I stayed up till one o'clock and then I slept, well, Annie slept in my bed last night and we slept till 8.30. I didn't work out. But if my husband was there, my accountability, he would have gotten me up and said, let's go work out. And I would have been like, uh, I stayed up too late. And he'd been like, that's your fault. Get up. We're working out. So he would have said it nicely. Guys, okay, so that's the important part of having accountability, whether it's online or a friend or family member. It is super important that you don't have, and it doesn't have to be somebody in your home. It doesn't have to be like my sister doesn't live with me, but in Minnesota, I know she's going to meet me at the gym or she's going to teach the class or she's going to pick me up and I go like I get up. Right? Yeah. So Here's the deal. How is your day? If you're rebooting, watch the reboot group. It's so important. There's great lives the entire time. If you're not rebooting, what are you having for lunch? Where are you tuning in from? And if you are my current customer, post customer below, or if you want to join us on the challenge starting January for accountability uh, to help start your new year off amazingly, post challenge below and I'll get back to you. Are you ready for your steak? Yes. Okay, I'm going to go get my kids some food. We'll talk to you soon.